Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on how to complete close exercises quickly. There's already a long video in the channel where I look at each option very, very carefully. In this one, I'm going to show you how to move with pace. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, check out the links in the video description, and if you want more exercises like this, have a look at the 11 Plus Lifeline service that you can find through Google. Let's get started. This text is taken from a book by Charles Dickens in which he writes about visiting Rome. And he begins, It is an awful thing to th of the enormous cabins that are something from some Roman churches and undermine the... Well, okay, it is an awful thing to... It must be think. This is an easy opening. We don't need to go into this too much. These cabins are a d from some Roman churches. What could they be? If a word ends in a d, it's likely to be an ed entered. And undermine the sir e. This is about being in Rome. We've seen Roman churches referred to. This is under the city. They mine under the city. Many churches have crypts and sub blah, 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 in chapels of great size. So we're talking about things that are under the churches and under the city. Now, if you don't know this word, you won't be able to get it. If you do know this word, and if you're thinking about things that are underground, you might know that another word for underground is subterranean. We need to count the gaps to check that it fits. Subterranean, yes. Terra, referring to the earth, so subterranean, under the earth. Which, in ancient time, were baths and something crut, chambers of temples and whatnot. C is likely to have a vowel before it, A-E-I-O-E, -E, ecret, secret, and whatnot. But I do not of them. So he's the writer, he's not going to write about them, he's not going to speak of them. Birth, the church of San, Gian of San Giovanni in San Paolo, there are the jaws of a terrific range of... Okay, so we're talking about things that are underground, so this must be beneath. Notice how I'm always talking and thinking about the context. In other words, I'm not just staring at the letters. I'm thinking about what's going on and what logically the writer is likely to be talking about. And here we're talking about things that are underneath the ground. So beneath makes sense. Beneath the church of San Giovanni and San Paolo, there are the jaws of a terrific range of... Okay, this is tricky. Of some things hewn out of the rock and said to have something outlet beneath the Colosseum. Ah, so they are beneath these churches and they have another outlet, that must be. So we've actually moved past the hard word to find another one that we can fill in, which might give us a clue. So we're talking about something that's been hewn out of the rock. You should be able to work out that hewn means carved or cut out of the rock. And these, whatever they are, have another outlet in another place. So these are a terrific range of tunnels, Caves? Ah, so we got the, so cave, caverns. So we think flexibly, we follow our ideas, thinking about the context and about the letters. We start to fill in some thoughts. It's useful to have a pencil rather than a pen so that you can rub out things if they're wrong. And then we get to the right answer. Prua, us, darknesses of vast, half buried in the earth and unexplorable. Okay, so we know that these things are vast, so tre a US word is often O-U-S, tre is going to have a consonant after it, we think through the consonants, and maybe we happen upon M, and we realise that it must be tremendous. Tremendous darknesses are vast, so the darkness is tremendous, and they're vast, they're a vast, well it's an X, so it's very likely to have an E before it, and NT at the end is quite likely to have an E before it, and then we're only left with T for extent. Darkness is a vast extent. So there are some quite tricky words here, but the text gives us enough clues to find them reliably. Half buried in the earth and unexplorable, where the dull torches, fished by the attendants, what might you do with the torch? You might flash it. Flashed by the attendants, glur down long ranges of distant vaults. So the torches might, they might glitter, that would fit, but does a torch glitter? Not really, um, they more shine. Uh, and if they're shining off lots of things, then they might, well, we, the eye is quite likely, and an 
ER is quite likely. Glitter didn't work. Let's think of some other consonants. Glimmer. So just because you find a word that fits, it doesn't mean that that's the correct option. Think about the context and think about what makes sense. Glitter wouldn't be correct here. It's hard to know exactly how a torch would be glittering here. Down long ranges of distant bolts, branching to the ng and left. Oh, this one's easy. The right and left. Like streets in a city of the dead. And show the cold, damp, teal down the walls. Drip, top, drip, drop. So this is a verb. We're left with three unknowns at the end. That's really likely to be ing, something tealing, uh, stealing. So creeping down the walls. Drip, top, drip, drop. To join the ums of water that lie here and there. Okay, what might water lie in? It might lie in puddles, it might lie in ponds, it might lie in pools. Pools, that fits. So pools, we can put there. And never saw and never will see one r of sun. Ah, oh, that's easy, it must be ray. It's the only thing that makes sense and might fit. Some ac make these the prisons of the wild beast. De for the amphitheatre. Some the prisons of the condemned, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're saying that there's more than one version or more than one theory about what these things are, what they were. So some, what could be a word for, an, for a theory or an opinion? Um, different ways that people tell it. Some accounts. Some accounts make these the prisons of the wild beasts something for the amphitheatre. Well, you probably know what an amphitheatre is, but even if you don't, there's the word theatre inside it. So these beasts are for this kind of theatre, and you can probably guess that they're going to fight there. If you're waiting to be employed or used somewhere, then I suppose you are detained before it, but that doesn't fit. Uh, you're also destined for it. It's your fate. Some, the prisons of the condemned. Right, now here we need a bit of general knowledge. So beasts might go out to perform, to fight in this amphitheatre. You'll notice that later on we've got a reference to the Colosseum, and I think we've actually already had a reference to the Colosseum earlier on. So this should be in your minds, and I'm sure from your general knowledge you know what happened in the Colosseum in Rome. So who else fought in the Colosseum who might need to have been kept in a prison? It would be some kind of servant or slave who has to fight in this place. Of course, you're thinking of gladiators. Some, both. So some of these accounts suggest both possibilities. But the legend most appealing to the fancy is that in the something range, upper, oh, it almost sounds like the answer, it must be upper, for there are two something of these caves. So this is something to do with there being an upper range. And then he had brackets saying, for because there are two of these caves. So if there's an upper range, there must be a lower range, which means there are two levels to stories. So we're thinking not only about the context in terms of the meaning, but we're thinking about the way the sentence is structured to give us clues. In the upper range, the early Christians Da, 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 to be eaten at the Colosseum shows. Hang on a sec. If we remember what we've already done, we spoke about beasts destined for the amphitheatre, and now we must have Christians destined, same word, to be eaten at the Colosseum shows. Heard the wild beasts, hungry for them, right down below. Ah, yes, we can guess this easily enough. It must be roaring. Roaring down below. Until upon the night and solitude of their captivity, there, so we're thinking about these early Christians held down below in these prisons, until upon the night and solitude of their captivity, there, mm, the sudden noon and life of the vast theatre crowded to the parapet, and of these their dreaded neighbours, the wild beasts, bounding in to eat them. Okay, so there arose, there appeared, there... Hmm, tricky. If it ends with an, if it has an S towards the end, what's likely to come after it? Maybe an E. That doesn't suggest any words. Um, maybe a double S. First, no, nothing there. Um, T. There, worst, worst, burst. 
there burst the sudden noon of light and life of the vast theatre. So in other words, it strikes them suddenly in an overwhelming and terrifying fashion. And that's it. We've completed the exercise. I hope that's helpful. I'm just trying to take you into my mindset, into my thought process as I do one of these exercises, and I hope you can carry that through into your own work and get even better marks in the exam. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, check the links in the video description, have a look at 11 Plus Lifeline which is full of more things like this and all sorts of other past papers, practice papers and exercises, always with my fully explained solutions, and I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock for my next easy 11 Plus live lesson. Bye-bye.